Hey guys, welcome to this Flutter app development series where we are creating that wallpaper app which no one wants. So till now we have successfully written code to fetch all the wallpapers from Cloudfire store and display them in all images page of this app. In the last video we did some code refactoring so that we can pass the same snapshot of wallpaper collection to each page. And for that we added a named parameter to constructor of each of these three widgets. Now in this video we will focus on implementing the home class so that we can display all the different categories of wallpaper we have in Firestore. So let's get started. First I'll add two lists of strings in the home state class. One will store the name of categories and the other one will store URL of first image of that category. So my plan here is to display the first image from each category along with its name in a list view format. And these two lists will help in doing that. We will first have to populate these lists before we start building widgets for the state. And to do that, I'll override the init state method of state class. In this method, after calling the init state of base class, I'll loop over all the documents of current snapshot and will try to find their categories. To loop over all the documents, we can use the for each method on documents list of the snapshot. Basically, for each needs a function which takes the current element as an argument. In our case, this will be the current document and then for each calls this function for each element. I'll rename it from element to document so that it becomes easier to read. Inside this function, I'll first get the category of current document. I have added a string field to each wallpaper document called tag, which stores the category of that wallpaper. So to get the category, I'll find the value of tag in document.data, which is just a map. Now, since we only want to store unique categories, I'll add an if check here to make sure that category that we just got is not already present in categories list. For this, I'll use the contains method on categories list and then I'll add a not here. So this block will only get executed if categories list does not contain the given category. And inside this block, I'll add the current category into categories list. As we also want an image for each category, I'll find the value of URL from current document and add it to category images. Now once this init state method completes, we will have all the unique categories and their first wallpaper in those two lists. And we can now finally start building this state class. So first, I'll remove all this code and I'll replace it by grid view widget. I'll use the builder constructor here. Grid delegate will be sliver grid delegate with fixed cross access count with cross access count of 1. And the item builder will be function which takes in a context and an index. From this builder, I'll return a container. I'll also set the item count to categories.length so that the number of widgets generated by this builder will be limited to the number of unique categories. Inside this builder, I'll first set the decoration property to box decoration. For the image property of this box decoration, I'll use decoration image. And the image property of this decoration image will be a cached network image. For the URL, I'll use the categories image list that we populated in init state. And I'll get the element at current index. Now let's check how this looks in the app. For that, I'll restart the app so that init state method will get executed once again and as you can see we are getting a list containing one image for each category let's set the fit property of decoration image to box fit dot cover so that these images cover the entire space next i would like to make the borders of this image rounded and for that i'll use border radius property of box decoration here i'll use the circular named constructor of border radius and set the radius to 50 and as you can see, the corners are now rounded. Let's also set the margin property of this container to have an inset of 5 from all sides. You can play around with these values to get the desired look you want. Like if you set the radius to extremely high value, you will get a circular image. For now, I'll leave it to 50. My main aim is to first get all the functionality working and once all that is done, I'll shift my focus to these cosmetic changes. So now that we have these images for each category, I would like to display the name of each category on these images. And for that, I'll use the child property of this container widget. 
just to check if we are getting the correct names i'll quickly add a text widget here which will display the category at current index from the categories list and as you can see some small text is displayed at the top left corner of this image let's set the alignment property of the container to center so that text moves at the center of this image i'll increase the font size of this image using the style property of text widget also Let's change the color to white so that the text becomes more easily readable. I'll also set the decoration property of this image to decoration dot underline. You can see that the category names are displayed in lower case. This is happening because I have specified them in lower case in Firebase, but I don't have to make changes in Firebase to correct this. We can simply call to upper on this category name to convert it to upper case at runtime. This looks much better now. Next, I would like to have a line above the text as well. As you can see that we can use text decoration dot overline to get the line above, but then we cannot have an underline. So, if you would like to have multiple decorations, you can use the combined named constructor of text decoration. In here, you can specify a list of text decoration, and all of them will be applied to this text widget. So, I'll set both underline and overline here. Let's also use the decoration style property and set it to decoration style dot double. This will double the number of lines. You might be thinking, why the hell did I use a grid view when the output effectively looks like a list view? And the reason is because I'm not sure if I want a list view or a grid view. And by changing cross axis count, I can easily switch between the two of them. I leave it to one for now because, as I said, I'll focus on the UI part later. So for now, this is good enough. We have now a way to display all the unique categories in this app. As long as we have a way to populate the list of unique categories, we can always display them in different types of views. Right now, users cannot click on any of the images, and we will probably address that in the next video. I'm not super happy with the current output, but I think this is good enough for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to follow along. If you have missed something, you can check out the GitHub repository linked in the description. That being said, if you like the video, hit that like button, share it with your friends who might be interested, and maybe also consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll see you in the next one.